Somehow, Pelican Landing now looks like this. Interesting developments on the Toontown Path mystery, and Small World is closed, but for how long? All coming up next on Fresh Bait. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to this week's construction update, a slow construction week that suddenly turned into a very interesting construction week. We'll start with Pelican Landing, where last week our view looked like this. Not much to speak of, really, other than, you know, the seating area nearest to the Columbia kind of taking shape a little bit. Then all of a sudden, they drop the scrim, and look! It's, it's, it's done! It's practically done, and it looks pretty good, if you ask me. How good depends on what your expectations were going in, but for me, I was just expecting more tables and chairs. Nothing too fancy. But I got maybe a little more than I was expecting, I think. In this view right here, I'm seeing at least six tables, maybe eight. Hard to tell for sure, but it's it's well-defined area. Uh, it looks a bit like the old smoking section that turned into seating area before. And it looks like in some... I don't see chairs exactly yet, uh, but it looks like guests will be seating maybe on wooden boxes. I think that's what I'm seeing there rather than chairs, but I'm not sure. We'll see. The lighting fixtures look great too, and we're actually going to see in a minute just how good they look at night. But uh, this new seating area, the multi-level seating in effect, looks really cool. Take these steps up to the seating area and under the Pelican Landing sign. I uh, can't see yet how many tables there might be, but I'm guessing another eight or so. Uh, this really does look like a fine place to enjoy a meal. Tables will be hard to come by though, so if you're interested in sitting here, you may have to stock <laughs> one of the tables. Uh, and I've also learned that there's a bit of a backstory to Pelican Landing. It was established, according to this backstory, in 1787, same year, the Columbia Redivia, Redivivia, Redivivia was built, the ship that inspired Disneyland's replica Columbia. The area is called Pelican's Landing after the state bird of Louisiana. And though we can't see them yet, per the OC register, guests will be able to find shadow boxes in the seating area filled with you know sailing props uh sailors macrame bosun's whistles ships rosters and local flora and fauna plus something that we disneyland nerds love fictional historical information about the columbia and the mark twain i can't wait oh and by the way yes i did promise you some night shots here's a shot i took of pelican landing later that night And this just in, they've opened it. Uh, as I was writing this and recording this, they have opened Pelican's Landing, at least according to the WDI's Instagram feed. Uh, this right here looks great. I'm already loving it. Looks like way more than eight tables on the upper deck of the seating area. Very nice view also of the docked Mark Twain. Here's your crew, your imaginary crew that made Pelican's Landing possible. Please, though, don't feed the Pelicans. Uh, and then there's a look at the elevated seating area from the bottom of the stairs, and this is joyous. I'm really, really digging the way this looks. No sign, though, so far in these photos of the shadow boxes. But there are Pelicans! <laughs> I love it. That's very exciting. Uh, very happy to have been able to lead off with that today. Uh, let's go now to our next big story, and that is the recent developments concerning our favorite little mystery called What in the Heck is This Path For? Pretty sure that's a Hardy Boys title. Uh, we got our usual weekly shot of how it's progressing, and it, you know, progressing it is. Looks much like the same as it did last week. Concrete is poured, though there are some, you know, some curious sectioning of certain areas. Light posts installed, still no handrails though. We confirmed last week that the path would definitely be going at least under the bridge, possibly through it and into Toontown. Well, you've probably heard the news of the major update coming to Toontown. They're going to redo that entire entrance area and included in the concept art was this. That's our path, which confirms that this path is going not just under the bridge, but into Toontown, thus confirming that this path is actually not specific to Small World, but to Toontown, or both, actually, or neither. I mean, it does go up to Small World, but that's not the end of the story. This path is green, much like the green area over here where the Roger Rabbit Fountain was. Now, we posited in our video on this concept art 
earlier this week that it most likely will be will not be real grass, I should say, or even grassy, because they're going to be parking strollers here. So I'm wondering then, is this path going to be anything like that area as you know, green concrete? Hard to say, but one thing I've come to believe after talking to a few people is that it may not be path at all, at least not for anything like like ADA. It may, it may, well, it may just be planter after all or nothing. I don't know. Uh, or maybe something just otherwise decorative. Why? I'm not sure. Why they would build a planter or any kind of decorative area here, I'm not sure. But there are a few things that lead me to believe this, or at least to exclude the other things. One, this section right here. This section is not meant for guests. The least of which are those guests who might possibly be in a wheelchair or a scooter. It, I mean, it's just not passable. Look at it. That is not a place where guests should be. If it were ADA, it would be more purpose-built. They would have built around that, that column. Two, the concept art of the path does not show any people on it. It's empty. Now, there are people everywhere else in this concept art, but not here. In fact, there are people in wheelchairs in the concept art, but not in the area that would supposedly have been created for them. So if, if their intent was here was to make this ADA, I feel like the concept art would have included them as they did in other areas. Then there's the path itself. First, as I mentioned, no handrails, no rail. Now, they could be coming later, but I mean, I feel like that's the kind of thing that they might have built already, but that definitely could be happening later. Uh, but there's also no means of exiting this path until you get all the way into Toontown. If this were an ADA exit from Small World, for example, why send them to Toontown only to make them make a U-turn at the end and go back up the hill? That is, if they don't want to go, maybe they don't have any interest in going to Toontown. You gotta, you're going to send them all the way down to Toontown, tell them to make a U-turn, and then climb back up the hill. Or if they're going the other way, let's say the path from Toontown into Small World, that path leads you into the backside of the Small World gift shop. The dead end at Small World is perhaps the most confusing part of this conversation. The only logical thing that one could speculate here is some kind of queue for Small World, right? Fast pass, lightning lane, we talked about that, but that would be crazy, in my opinion. It's crazy <laughs> to have that begin from Roger Rabbit. That's ludicrous. Not when they have a perfectly good queue to use already uh, for, for Small World. And the reverse is true, too. If you want to say this is extended queue for, uh, for Runaway Railway, it's equally crazy because now that path begins in this little dead-end nook of Small World. So I am completely at a loss as to what this could be for. Uh, it's all just complete. It's just inexplicable. Uh, and I have to believe what my eyes are telling me at the bottom you know, of all this because we were thinking ADA. I have to believe that what my eyes are telling me and that this is just, it's just not ADA. It does, it does not say ADA. A planter is actually starting to make more sense to me now. But then that, you know, begs the whole other conversation. Why even build that? <laughs> what do you need a planner here for? Why would you narrow a path just to put something that's decorative? And, and, and obviously in its concrete? I, I don't know, man. Who knows? Uh, but speaking of Small World, Small World Holiday did not open as scheduled due to a flood, as you may have heard already. Its return is kind of a fluid situation. At one point, we thought we'd have it back up already. I had heard a date of something like, I think it was the 18th. Uh, but then that got pushed back a week, pushed back to the 22nd, which is actually, the, that's the current status as I know it today, that it's coming back on the 22nd. But they could just as easily push it back again, just like they did this, you know, this last time. Uh, and in fact, I, I feel like it's likely that they're going to push it back again because the damage from what I'm hearing is pretty serious. Uh, it's more than just too much water. It's more than just a flood. Uh, so our best hope right now is that it's open for the Thanksgiving weekend. But in my opinion... Even that seems a little optimistic. Meanwhile, across the way, the scrim has been removed from the Fantasyland Theater sign to reveal that it looks pretty much exactly like it did before. So my guess is it was just new paint, cleaning it up, you know, brushing it up a little bit. Why? I don't know. Again, because this area <laughs> is unoccupied. Why they felt compelled to clean up that sign if they're not going to put anything there is once more inexplicable to me. I'm not sad that they did it. Matter of fact, I'm not even sure if they did anything now that I look at it. So that's another really interesting mystery, completely unnecessary from a guest perspective. 
And we'll end with one other interesting observation that I made the other day. Over at the Main Street train station, for the first time since the parks reopened, guests can access the area that looks out into Town Square. That's been roped off, uh, you know, because that's where the, uh, guests can meet Mickey and Minnie and Goofy and all that stuff. Now, today, you still enter from the exit like we had before going up those steps. But they have rerouted guests to enter the queue as nature intended. And that is through those main doors, through the main entrance. And with this, now we can look out into Town Square again. And I have to say, this made me really happy. Happy enough that I that I mention it in this video, because normally it's, this is not a big deal, but it is to me. Having this view, at least whatever view it is, you know, while we're walking into the train station is precious to me. I love this look out in the town square on Main Street. So this really made me happy being able to do this. I'm ranting now. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, and until next time, be sure to follow us on Instagram at underscore Fresh Baked, on Twitter at Fresh Baked Disney, that's fresh with no E, and on TikTok at Fresh Baked Disney. If you like our show and want to show you support, please do consider joining our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash Fresh Baked. Otherwise, thanks for watching, everybody. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. And Fresh Baked!